Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya, weird news, hot gossip, and scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to the Camp Counselor Podcast. Oh my God, you're here again. It is week 41 here at Camp Shady Birch, and we're so glad to have you here with us at um, Camp Shady Birch Bar and Grill. Yes, I was telling Jonathan the other day, I was like, we should start calling camp counselors a bar and grill i think it's funny is the grill is there an e at the end is the real question there ha- there is never a bar and grill without the e at the end bar and grilly well it's funny because the shirt you're wearing is a classic <laughs> bar and grill thank you chilies shout out chilies this episode is not sponsored but it should be it should be i haven't been to chilies in a minute <sighs> God, I love a Chili's. Um, I love a bar. I love a classic bar and grill. Let's be honest. Yeah, anything with a bar and grill written on it or like labeled as such, I am obsessed. <laughs> yeah, I will show up and show out. Okay, so speaking of bar and grill, hard left turn here. What did we do this week? We went to the premiere of Netflix Black Mirror. Yeah, you guys, Black Mirror fans, that sh- it hasn't been on in like years. Someone say eons. Yeah, I'm a huge Black Mirror fan. I am as well. I really enjoy um, the Twilight zoniness of it all. Do you have a favorite episode from previous uh, previous seasons? I don't remember what I did yesterday, so I don't like literally remember any of it at all. But um, I feel like they had to stop it for a couple of years because of COVID. Yeah. Because life was just too tough and they were like, hey, yeah, hey, we cannot stress people out more than they already are, you know? Yeah. And it was definitely like... <laughs> We were living in a a Black Mirror episode. Like, I feel like everybody was saying that, but we actually were. Speaking of men in wigs, who showed up? Oh, okay. So I'll explain the event. So I was invited to, like, this Black Mirror screening by Netflix. So do you guys know who Trixie and Katya are? They're better. They're, like, really famous drag queens from the RuPaul franchise, RuPaul Drag Race franchise. And now they've, like, definitely done a lot more than just the show. But um, they have this, like, Netflix partnership where they do, like, a rewatch of popular shows on Netflix. And then it gets posted on, like, their socials. And they'll, like, just watch an episode and react in live time. It's just called We Like to Watch, right? Yeah, it's called We Like to Watch. It's really funny. Um, So this whole thing was, like, set up. It was, like, oh, come watch a Black Mirror episode before it gets, like, actually posted online. And then Trixie and Katsy are going to do their first ever, like, live, like, rewatch of the show and give their commentary like they had never done it in front of an audience before. Yeah. I was like, ah, absolutely. So we get there at 7.30 because I was like, okay, like this starts at 8. I know there's going to be a line. And it's kind of annoying when you get invited to some of these events, guys. They they don't guarantee that you get in. They like overcommit to it in hopes that they like fill seats. But if you don't show up on time, like you're not guaranteed to see, which I think is kind of annoying because like why am I RSVPing and like taking an Uber all the way to like midtown Manhattan if you can't guarantee me a seat? Like I'm not going to be late, but like, just yeah. I, I want to make sure my seat's guaranteed yeah we got there early and then the line was wrapped around the building so the people at the end who were waiting for quite some time definitely did not get in yeah and some tea because i'm going to be a gossip i don't care there was a couple tiktokers there who i noticed who i know are new york city like influencers and they don't have huge following you guys like they have like a whatever following like good for you i guess but they would like show up and they look at the line and they refuse to wait in line they would walk all the way to the front find someone to talk to and then skip and the line in front of everybody and cut in front of everybody and i'm like that is such bullshit because the rest of us got here on time yeah. and we waited in line and you think you're better than everybody else and it really pissed me off. I know exactly who they were. I don't know if they know who I am, but I knew who they were. Should we name drop? No, I won't name drop. I'll do that on Patreon only. Okay. Um, but I was just like annoyed. I was like, it's just like such bad like etiquette. Like that's like a, that's creating a caste system here. Just, uh, just cutting people in line. Okay, we're, t- we're doing an early take a hike. I cutting am. people in line because the people who were behind us, there were two lovely women behind us who were we don't, fine. We don't know if they were lovely. Okay, let me just let me just move on with that. So there were two possibly lovely women, two <laughs> mediocre women behind us. How yeah. about that? Do you yeah, like that? I like that. Two mediocre women behind us. And there was one guy who came up and he said hi. And he had come late. Like there was already a line that was like down the block. And he was like, hi. And she offered. She said, you're more than welcome to like jump in line with us. And he said, okay, cool. Thank you. Do you mind if my friends come? And she was like, oh, okay. Fr- round one of friends come. There's like maybe 
two, two other friends that come and then a, a second round of two more people come through and stand in line. I would have been pissed if I was the people behind. I would have been pissed too. That's like how many people is that? I'm not great at math. I can't crunch the numbers. I can't there do was a crunch a plus, to save my life. A plus five. Yeah. Who weren't there. Who came maybe 50-ish minutes late. Yeah. And I was just like annoyed by that. I just don't think anyone's better than anybody. And I feel like if you want to do something, then show up. Like, like I wanted to, I wanted to guarantee spot, a guarantee spot too. But I wasn't going to go up to the front and be like, well, I'm here because I was, you know, it's just like annoying. Yeah. All that to say, the event was, <laughs> was fun. great. Once it we was. got inside, well, I'm was. gonna bitch. I'm gonna bitch. It's our podcast. That's what we're here to do. Yeah, fuck it. So we get inside. It's at the Paris Theater, which is like right near Central Park. Oui, 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 oui. Se meta j'imagine dans son sandulage avec quelque quelque loque me vient en dessous. Wait, what was that? God only knows. Oh, was that a word? God only knows how I know without you. What was that? What did you say something really? Yeah, I did. What did you say? I don't recall, but I did take French class. So how did you say it if you don't know what it was? I think it's a song. My mom taught me when I was like eight years old how to say shut up in French. How do you say it? Femme la bouche. Which means um, shut your mouth. I learned how to say shut up in um in Italian. Can I hear it? Fuck off. Okay. Anyways, moving forward. <laughs> the Paris Theater, you guys. I don't know if anyone's a Sex and the City's fan, a Sex and the City fan. There was an episode where Carrie went to the Paris Theater and she saw a French movie by herself because that girl loved to be the main character. Carrie Bradshaw might have potentially invented main character energy. Yeah, selfish character energy for sure. Once again, we're gonna rec- we're gonna cover this on a different episode of the podcast because mm-hmm. very different opinions. Sarah Jessica Parker, however. What about Love her? her. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better because you hate Julia Roberts. So I just want to make sure that you're like on course with something correct. Once again, I do not hate Julia Roberts. You hate Emma Roberts. I don't like Emma. I don't hate Emma Roberts. I think she, I'm tired of seeing the same character played over and over and over again. She's, I love that movie, The Holiday. The Holiday. And it was, that was towing the line of a different character for the first time in a very long time. But I don't need to see Madison Montgomery like another time. I don't need to see it. Do you know who she was different as? Unfabulous. Addie Singer. Yeah, that she was. So she's actually, I follow her on Instagram and she's currently filming that show with Kim Kardashian. Oh, that show, like American the, Horror Story. Oh my god, I'm I'm so sorry, I didn't say it correctly. <laughs> so she's filming that show with Kim Kardashian, and she brought her kid to set, and she posted on Instagram today. Her son is two years old. That's nutty, like Magoo. a real little person. Yeah, he can almost vote. Well, our son is actually only one week old, if you remember from last <laughs> week. <laughs> Forty-one weeks. So we get into the theater, you guys, and they give us popcorn and light refreshments, and we're sitting down. And the whole entire theater is black. Okay, they turned off all the lights, and they have the cameras running, and we see these two mysterious figures pop up on stage. And I knew it wasn't Trixie and Katya because. Their wigs are huge. Yeah. I was th- I was questioning who it was as well. Okay, so sorry. For context, we had already watched the screening and then Trixie and Katya were going to come out and we didn't know where it was going from there. Trixie and Katya were going to come out on the stage and like do their show. Oh, so you're we watched right. the episode of Black Mirror. I'm sorry. You're yeah. correct. We did watch the episode first, which mm-hmm. now that the episode's aired, it's called um, Everybody Hates Annie. No. Oh. Um, what's her name is Awful. Oh. Greta is Awful. Greta Pam Thunberg. Is awful. Pam is Awful. Tara is Awful. <sighs> Janet is Awful. A female name is awful. What Gr- is it? It truly Gr- doesn't. It truly doesn't matter to the story. There is a woman who is awful, and that is the episode. Annie Murphy. Annie Murphy is playing the titular character in the episode. Episode's great, by the way. If you're a Black Mirror fan, go, 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 go watch it. It's going to be awesome. Um, so we watch the entire episode. Then lights, lights completely turn off. We see these two figures get on stage. Lights turn on. Who is it? Annie Murphy and Selma Hayek. Annie Murphy and Selma Hayek are on stage, the stars of the episode, and they're like, hi, I'm Trixie and I'm Katya. And it was like definitely like meta to the episode. Oh my yeah. God, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I almost sharded. I almost said Annie says, by the way. Oh, I don't know why you would say that. Annie says. Like is Simon a, says. But it's a fabric company that went that went under in 2007. Well, you know, if, if they went under, it's nice to see that you're keeping their memory alive. Yeah. But anyway, so the surprise happened and we couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And then they had to do that since it's like a, they were screening that like episode that we were talking about, like that like rewatch thing. Mm-hmm. Annie and like Selma to be a part of that had to like have a couple lines read. And I will say, Selma Hayek, she does not read well. No. She claims to be dyslexic. And if that's the case, God bless her. But... 
she had like one we sentence, did do a couple takes and it was like god it was like okay season six of black mirror airing this friday it was also giving a little bit of she wasn't really told what she was gonna do until she was thrown out on stage and frustration from her which i can understand because I can understand to as well. go in front of a live audience and like who thinks so highly of you and who's excited to see you and then be given a, a random script and 100%. not knowing exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I think people think because she's an actress and she's a superstar that she's like able to just go out there and wing it. It's like everybody needs to be prepared. So we're with you, Salma, but you ended up killing it. And then enters Trixie, Trixie and Katya. Katya. So here was a drama with the event, you guys. We got there at eight. We got there at seven thirty. Doors opened at eight fifteen. By the time the screening started, it was eight forty-five. By the time the episode ended, and then they Trixie and Katya came out, it's ten o'clock. We've been there now for two and a half hours. And we didn't know what to expect after that. We're like, okay, we knew that they had this show where they review the show, but we had no idea. Okay, we're gonna recap it and just chat about it is what my my assumption was but you know what they say about assumptions they make an ass out of you and i well i was gonna say it makes you look fucking stupid when you're wrong but that works as well well same sentiment different way of saying mm. it um no so then they so salma and annie murphy leave the stage and then trixie and katya touch up their makeup and they start recording the show so that means they have to rewatch the entire episode and pause it every 20 seconds so they can like give commentary and it was hysterical it was, it was so, so fun it took so long though because the episode itself is 50 minutes plus their 50 additional minutes so it becomes like 11 15 and we're still there and i was like oh, oh my god i have to pee we can't get up like we're being filmed um it was amazing though they are they are just comedy legends I, those two i do just want to say that because they were filming the audience for a lot of it we were so not going to be we were literally like i was hunched over like this like my one eye was like closing because I was just so tired. And um, anytime the camera was coming over, I was clapping my damn hands and I was laughing like a little monkey. They're probably not going to use that footage. But if you see footage of me on that episode that they're putting out, <laughs> which uh, we should check out. We should see if we're on there. I don't think we're going to be on it because... They were filming a lot of the aisle seats and we were kind of in the middle towards the back. So it had to be like a really wide shot and people near us had left early because it was just going on too long. And yeah. they're not going to show an empty like row of seats. Yeah. That looks bad on everybody. Yeah. But it was really fun. Also, I just want to segue a little bit here. Um, Please the do. The night before that, we were at um, the Queerty 50 oh, Awards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to those awards. Really awesome. It's Queerty's like this like really um, gay publication that like promotes a lot of queer news stories and they like honored 50 queer members of society and this great little ingenue. What is an ingenue? I just wanted to say it. Couldn't tell, yeah. So it was an ingenue, I guess. And we were invited to the party and at one point there was a drag queen that I wanted Jonathan to notice. And I was like, Jonathan, there's this like so-and-so is directly behind you. Can we say who it is? No, because I don't know. I don't okay. want to. No, right. I don't know if it's okay. gotcha. those reasons. Um, and I was like, so-and-so is directly behind you. And you said, what are they wearing? <laughs> and I said, Jonathan, this is a seven foot eight man in a wig that is higher than the fucking ceiling rafters wearing yellow and black. Okay. Two but feet behind you. You're not going to miss them. They're bigger than a taxi cab at this point. You know, it was, it was one of my dumber questions. How It was a dumb question. It was just funny. Ever, it was funny. But I did have reason because a uh, friend of the show, Marsha, 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 from last season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Who, friend of the show. Who, friend of the show. Hey, that's a friend of the show. Yeah, who we ran into again was out of drag. So in my head when you said that. Fair. Because also Lucy Luduka was standing behind me out of drag. Didn't recall. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. So in my head I was like, oh, okay. This person may be out of drag because a lot of people who are drag queens were out of drag that night. Okay, well, it's fair. But it was funny because then I turned around and I saw who you were talking about. And I was like, in this sea of people, there's no way you can miss Big Bird. Well, that was a fun event. And they so honored fun. 50 people a year. So we're really fishing to get invited next to or to be like an honoree. Yeah. Come on, nominate camp counselor. No, please. But we're grateful for all the opportunities we have. We just want to give you some insight. And yo, that episode of Black Mirror. Okay, wait, the one that's coming to my mind. What is it? What's your favorite? The Ashley O episode. Come oh, on now. Why everyone was that? knows that episode. That was such a gay anthem. Ashley O's on a roll, Miley Cyrus, is giving what Padam Padam is giving yeah, from the same, Kylie Minogue right now. It's the same energy. Same cultural phenomenon yeah, for sure. It's very gay. I was always really scared of the episode. I don't know if you guys have seen it, where like in the episode, parents at birth could put these like 
cameras into their kids' eyes so that, like, they could, like, track them for surveillance. And this mom, like, never, like, she did it, but she never, like, turned it on. And then one night her daughter wasn't answering her phone and she was, like, panicking. And she turned it on and the daughter was, like, at, like losing her virginity and the mom saw it no, from her daughter's no, no, eyes. No, no, no. And it was just so creepy and scary. And non-consensual. I don't like it. Yeah. And that was the whole thing was, like, non-consensual surveillance because it's always a very, like political and interesting take they always do even this one it was like the episode that we saw was like had left turns like left and right that doesn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> but you know you get more it. left turns than a map quest printout i will say that episode was so meta it was meta beyond meta there were so many levels to it it was really good and it, i don't think it was to the point where i was so uncomfortable because yeah it's like it is real, but this one was like kind of fun in a little bit of a fucked up way. Oh yeah, like that one you could watch and not be like scared for your yeah. future. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely really cool, and we had a great time. Yeah, that was those were our events this week. Yeah, we were booked and busy. Two places to go day after day. Oh, I have to stand up. Hold on. Is okay. your Apple Watch telling you to stand? Yeah. Okay, move your little thighs. I've almost hit my stand goal. Well, stand up with me. I don't have my watch on. It's unprofessional. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Morning announcements, campers. Morning announcements. Attention campers, Zumba is back and better than ever. Yes, camp favorite, Jessica Sanchez will be returning to Camp Shady Birch to teach her hit Zumba class. Hips don't lie, throw me in the river. <laughs> Down by the docks every alternating Thursday through the months of July and halfway through August, which is the total of three classes. <laughs> Sign up now. Spaces are limited. That's right. Uh, you're going to be up to your hips in creek water because the Zumba class does take place in the water. Well, that's It's a combination of Zumba and water aerobics. It's good for your joints. It is. It's good for the blood system. Yeah, it's good for... It's good for the fish in the river who haven't been entertained by much lately. Well, the fish get priority bookings for the classes. So hurry up. <laughs> oh God, what are we talking about? Um, welcome back to morning announcements, everybody. We're also we are keeping the welcome back. Yeah, we've oh, heard a lot of feedback, and yeah. everybody loves to be welcomed at every single segment. Well, it's great that I, I'm glad that you guys don't actually give us your negative feedback because I'm yeah. sure there's people out there that didn't want it, but they didn't say anything. Yeah, if we were getting negative feedback, they'd be like, "Get that stupid slut, Jonathan, out of here." Woo! Um, welcome back. This is Morning Announcements. This is the part of the show where we share news articles that you might have missed that we didn't want you to. And that's why we're regurgitating them to you today like a mama bird. Open up. My article, it's short and sweet, and it's coming from UPI. And the title of this article is 685 people dressed as Spider-Man gather at Malaysian Mall. Couldn't have seen this one coming. Wait, I'm sorry. I'll say it later. Keep going. Okay, but feel free to interrupt at any point because it is short. So uh, <laughs> Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was released June 1st, 2023. I had no idea that this movie was coming out. Did you know? I did know it was coming out. Yes, I did. Love that, love that. It's that you. animated. They're doing like the animated ones now. Uh, yeah. It's that's not. so cool. I'm actually a really big... That's probably the only superhero movies that I actually enjoy. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Kirsten Dunst. I love Kirsten Dunst. I love Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe is so handsome and he's always Dafoe, which I think is funny because that's his last name. Okay. What's her name? Auntie Anne? Auntie M. Auntie M. I'm sorry. Auntie Anne. No, no, no. Is... That's Wizard of Oz, which oh, we watched yesterday. Who's the aunt in that movie? Auntie Anne is a pretzel cop. Aunt M. Um, Whatever. Uh, that old lady in, yeah. in the first one when she's praying, she's praying and... The, the green goblin comes in and blows her off her ass. That was too much. She, the, the woman was praying, okay? Yeah. You have to blow out her windows with fire. That was scary. She was praying. <laughs> Anyways, what's going on in Malaysia? All right, so June 3rd, Sony Pictures Entertainment Malaysia organized an event where hundreds of people would come dressed as Spider-Man to break a world record. Ugh, this is, I already have. This is my take a hike. So, is it? Okay. I'm ready to take a hike about the world. Why do we need a world record of Spider-Man? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, keep going. We are a little guilty in this story. Wait, what do you mean? I will follow up. Okay. So 685 people ended up showing up dressed as Spider-Man, and they had to stay in the... Aeon Mall. It's an all cap, so it's A E 
O N Mall. I don't know if that stands for anything, but hey, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. So these people stayed within that mall for five minutes was the the minimum amount of time they could stay. Oh, so challenging. To break the record. There was a lot of people. They looked like they were all having fun. And they did, in fact, break the world record. So what is the world record for most Spider-Mans in a room? 685. Okay. There wasn't one before. They was... set a world record. So Guinness Book of World Records, they were there for that. I mean, it was all, I mean, think about it. It's it's all um, like a marketing ploy, right? It's kind of fun though. And nobody got hurt. Everybody was having a good time. But you and I, I got an email. We were involved in a world record. When? With La Roche Posay. For the most amount of people, did you not get that email? No. The most amount of people who got their skin checked for cancer in a day. Wait, now I'm into it. So. Not me holding a world record. Yeah. Oh my God, guys. We are world record setters. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you guys wear sunscreen. La Rage Pose is not sponsoring this, but they should. I took my shirt off and I was like, look at this mole. And she was like, please put that back on. Wait, we were. T- so basically what we did, you were doing an ad for La Rage Pose. Full yeah, transparency. So don't say anything bad about them. No, I'm not saying anything, anything bad about them because I like know. them as a company. But they, the one girl was saying how the she walked into her tent because it was f- they were checking everybody's skin for free in New York City and was it Manhattan? Yeah. Was it Manhattan? Yeah. So it's very busy, a lot of people and the girl walked in and there was this guy just fully naked and she was not expecting it because it was kind of just like a get yourself checked and then we'll Sorry, I almost threw up in my mouth. And we'll suggest like a, a, a dermatologist to go to. Yeah, it, like it was so it was like a tented event, you guys. This was like a very like, I don't know, like, hey, like brief, right, guys? So it's like, show me your arms. Like even I took my shirt off and she was like, okay. Like I don't think they were really going for it. Like maybe you had one. But like, if, you, if you really need like an intensive checkup, yeah. full body scan, yeah. this wasn't the place for it. Yeah, you but they I mean? but they were checking. They were checking everywhere visible. That's like when you're wearing clothes out in the day. <laughs> the man. He shouldn't have been naked. He shouldn't have been naked. That's so weird. He shouldn't have been naked. And that man, um, he's here right now. Why don't you come on out? Come out. Gilbert Godfrey. I'm just kidding. Stinky Pete. (laughs) Stinky Pete. Um, Yeah, so that's pretty much... That's pretty much my story. Wait, I did not know we set a world record. I We set a world record. I love that. But I did kind of want to talk really quickly about um, companies just kind of like pulling a little publicity stunt. And I know you're going to like this part that happened in 2018 what? that I told you about. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but I had to bring it up. And I'm, I've been honestly waiting for any opportunity to bring this up. But in 2018, Wendy's dropped a mixtape called We Beefin. Oh, I love this mixtape. And it was chan- It was towards McDonald's. And they actually like, it was a disc. There was a whole disc track for McDonald's, multiple tracks but there was one where they were like mcdonald's you suck uh but it was actually good yeah like they definitely like hired someone who like knew Mm -hmm. how to write lyrics it actually got praise from um who did it get praise from i think ja rule i could be making that up and who was uh pharrell Pharrell was like, oh my God, this is great. Oh, it's actually crazy. So one time I was in a Shake Shack and Ja Rule came up to me and he was like, Zachariah, Zachariah, you are the coolest person I've ever met. And I said, Ja, 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 Ja. Not, and I was saying, I was actually laughing, but I was saying, Ja, 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 Ja. And I said, Ja Rule, I am, I, I need some privacy right now. I'm eating a burger. And he was in tears. He was like, please sign my lower back. And I was like, Ja Rule, I cannot do that in a Shake Shack. So it was the last time me and Ja hung out. Wait, that's funny you say that because dead ass on an actual note, we saw um who do we see it? Oh my god, we saw Chance the Rapper. Oh my Shake god, Chance Shack. the Rapper, yeah. Yeah. If you guys want to ever meet a rapper, head to Shake Shack. Head <laughs> to Shake Shack, dead ass. Okay, so I'm just gonna go briefly over this before you jump into your story because I know your story is gonna be tantalizing and delicious. Um, so there's five songs on this EP. You guys need to look it up. It is on Spotify. It's 10 minutes long. The songs include Twitter Fingers. Holding It Down, Rest in Grease, which is my personal favorite, Clowning, and for four, four for Four. Can you, do you remember any of the lyrics off the top of your head? From Rest in Grease? I don't know any of them. Yes, I do. Thank you so much for asking. I'm a boss chick, so they hate that. Boy, we tried your food. Where the flavor at? You number one. That's a joke. Why your ice cream machine always broke? Why your drives? <laughs> Why your drive through always slow? Why your innovation cannot grow? Them little tweets don't phase me. McDonald's be so lazy. I know I'm the reason you hate me because I'm fast food's first lady. Yeah, Wendy calling herself fast food first, fast food's first lady. I can't. 
That is so iconic. I can't. So that's, I just wanted to bring that up because I did want to spit those lyrics for you right here, right now. I will say like, if it's a competition between Miss Wendy and Mr. McDonald, like there's no competition. Yeah. I will, I will choose McDonald's every single time. They win in every category, I feel. Yeah. Like I'm never ever going to actively pick Wendy's over McDonald's. Mm, Wendy's definitely has some holes in their in their menu that there shouldn't be. First of all, they should have never switched the color from yellow to red. We want yellow Wendy's. We want yellow Wendy's. We want yellow Wendy's. Yellow Wendy's. Yellow Wendy's. Yellow Wendy's. Yellow Wendy's. What? Um also I really think when they switch the fry to that, like, remember they were like, oh, the skin's on it. It's like, lazy, sloppy, boring. boring. I don't want to see that on my fries. And if any chain does not salt their fries, it's Wendy's. Negative. Like, I've had that happen to me before. I call Wendy's fries toilet fries. They are the <gasps> first to get soggy. Oh, they're so incredibly soggy. And it just, it doesn't need to be. Yeah, um, but I, you know, I will say. What will you say? I will say that it is the only fast food chain that I can think of that has a creative way to have sour cream on the go. If you get the chili, they give you this weird cylinder, almost, what is it called when a triangle is like a shape that's longer? When like, a tri- wait, what's Think a triangle? about a cylinder, but it's a triangle instead of a circle, but it's like a oh, tube. Oh, okay, wait. What would you call that? You're talking about, they had the, the Minute Maid juice bars were the same shape, where it's kind of a triangle, this side, a triangle, that side, kind and you squeeze of, it on out. It's That's the closest where thing we're going to get. Okay, wait. So a seal, it's not like a go-gurt. Think about a go-gurt, how it's like it's a- It's not a go-gurt. But uh, if a go-gurt had one seal, that was the other way. Maybe, babe. I think we're going a little a little intense, a little, a little meta. I can't think. Like, I, I have to see it in my hand. <sighs> Wait, we'll put it up on the podcast. We'll show it on the video. We'll show a little. Th- they have, anyways, they have sour cream. I like to say it like that. Someone comment to that. Sour I cream. Do. They have sour cream in a little to go plastic container for the chili. And the chili is explicit. And then, wait, this was a big rumor going around, you guys. We're getting really off topic. Is it about the finger and the <clears> chili? <throat> no, I'm so sick of that story. I it's- have so much to say. She was a fraud. The finger never happened. Anyway, do you the finger never fucking happened. No, because. Uh, we'll talk about that at a later date. I'm sure it'll be brought up again. That woman, it's a smear campaign. You were that woman. I was not that woman. She faked a fa- No, we're not talking about it. I don't I, I okay, don't mean to interrupt you. You're clearly you. triggered. I'm and triggered. If you want to talk about it, you can talk about it. But what I was going to say was that someone once told me that they were like, you know they use the day old um, burgers for the ground meat in the chili. And I was like, okay, I don't care. That seems like a great way to repurpose the day old burgers. It's in a chili. Like that doesn't, that doesn't stress me out. Am I gross for thinking that's not stressful? As someone who worked at Wendy's. You guys, we've talked about before, but if you're unaware. I worked at Wendy's in high school. He fainted at a Wendy's once. I literally was in the back of an EMS. (laughs) You were. I had to get stitches at a Wendy's. It's true. The rumors are true. But, um... But yeah, the one that we were at was we had like maybe at the end of the night, we would have a small pot of chili that we would use yesterday's meat from. But it is fresh, never frozen. I will say that I never ate the meat. I've never had Wendy's chili, but I would prepare it. And I know that it's kind of like the freshest thing on the block because they it wasn't frozen. They would come in and the shelf life was so short. They had so many I'm not going to get into it. But basically, yeah, you're right. I will also say that a JBC, Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, mm. it's exquisite. Yeah. They always... So the lettuce, too. Let's get into this for a minute, guys. The lettuce on a JBC, it's it's almost watery because it's so crispy. It's crispy. Okay. And I just feel like you can... Like, when you go to McDonald's, the beauty of McDonald's is that if it doesn't matter if you go to McDonald's in Agawam, Massachusetts... Or Springfield, Oregon. Yeah, it's, or Collegeville, Pennsylvania. It's going to be the same McDonald's experience across the board. Correct. They really have it like down to a goddamn science. We're everywhere else. Like Duncan, love you to death. The variables are crazy with them. It's my home now. I won't ever say anything bad about them. Yeah, don't get me started on White Castle. Um, But I will say 
I don't remember what I was going to say. Wendy's is a little willy-nilly with his, what you were probably going to no, say. No, I was going to say is, so with this, with the science behind McDonald's, it's almost conveyor belt-esque. It feels like a little too mechanical with the presentation and the taste. Yeah, with Wendy's, you get personality. You never know what you're going to get. No, it just feels like it was really made by someone back there. Yeah. Like, McDonald's could have pulled that out of a machine, and, like, it could have been made by a robot, mm. and I would have been like, okay. But I couldn't tell... The texture of each ingredient was sliced and diced and packaged by a real person named Bartibus in the back, who's been an employee for four years. Bartibus in the back. He's putting money into his 401k, and he's using that college program that repays back your student loans if you stay with the company for 10 plus years. And yeah, and you can see if he's having a bad day because the burger is not going to be good on a bad day. It's going to be great on a good day. But that's what you get with a Wendy's. I've never had a bacon on a burger. You've never had a burger. Hey, do they do a good job with imitation bacon, you think? No, 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 no. bad. No. I don't think... So, for bacon bits... Ew, bacon bits are so fucking gross. Ew, I'm gonna flip out. If anyone ever puts the fucking bacon bits in the, on the salad dressing aisle, those little fake ones... I'm gonna flip out. They taste like liquid smoke that you use at um, they do at like a bar. But that's at I a mean bar. at a bar, yeah, liquid smoke. They have liquid smoke for drinks if you want to make something um, smoky. Babe, what? I don't know if that's true. I'm not talking about a fog machine. Like liquid smoke is an actual ingredient you can put into stuff. Regardless, irregardless. I've seen liquid smoke in the barbecue section. I'm sorry. Stop killing that plant. It's fake. I'm talking. It's How is that? That this stem has no leaves on it. Listen, I don't. I need to fidget with something while we talk. And it, speaking of fast food, you guys, we'll move on soon. But you're here for the ride anyway. Grimace just had a birthday. Y'all remember Grimace from McDonald's? Yeah. What's even more interesting is the erasure of Ronald. Where is Ronnie? You know where he shows up? Where? One time a year. When? Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade. He has secured his That's spot. It. Imagine next year he's gone and it's Grimace. I, you got if you're listening to this in the future. Oh, South Park. I think it's gonna happen. Simpsons. I, so if it's yeah, exactly. If if he's not there next year, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna freak out. But I'm over him. I, I I like Grimace more. I love Grimace. Birdie. Let's talk about Birdie. Yeah, Remember that little bitch. She's a hot little ticket. That little chickadee. Little, yeah, and she was created to um promote the breakfast menu. Promote the breakfast menu. She was the early. It's Birdie the early bird. And you know what? She's that bitch. Did She's you ever, serving. Did you ever see the picture of her wearing the sandals? I don't think that is appropriate. I'm gonna put it up right here. Okay, what about the hamburger? What was he there to promote? The I was the hamburg. I was the hamburger for Halloween. Thanksgiving. Yes, Halloween. Oh, interesting. That is the cutest little kid costume. Well, I was, I was in my twenties. It was twenty nineteen. Equally as cute, but not what I was picturing. Thank you. That's a really fun, doable costume, you guys. It is. It's an easy to do. But anyway, grimace. There was this lore going around, like, what is Grimace? And if you don't know what we're talking about, McDonald's Grimace, look it up. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, how much do you pay for the rock you've been living under? But he's like a purple. He almost looks like a weird chicken nugget or a turd. Not a chicken nugget, not a turd. He looks like if an eggplant was made of slime. Giving eggplant for sure. He's mm -hmm. triangular, that's for sure. He used to have like four hands. But, um, but. People were like, what is Grimace? What is Grimace? And McDonald's allegedly tweeted that they don't even know. They were like, according to hashtag Grimace lore, he is either a milkshake, which I don't understand, or a taste bud. He can't be a milkshake because he's not on a glass and you can't have a milkshake any other way. You can't have a milkshake walking around with no glass. True. So he's not a milkshake. And last time I checked, nobody's tongues are purple. A chow chow. They have purple tongues. What's that? The dog? A chihuahua? A chow chow. What's a chow chow? Martha Stewart has two. Why I don't have a clue. You've seen a chow chow before. Okay. They have purple tongues. Sometimes if people say they're vicious. I've never had one. Okay. Well he could be he could be that. But anyway, that's enough fast food talk. What um what do you have? We have really strayed quite far from where we began. Well, it's my turn to talk about my news. Please now. tell us about the news. What have you got? What's the scoop? This is quite possibly my favorite story to ever be spoken on Camp Counselor's podcast. And how exciting it is to be reporting things I love so much at week 41. I can't believe it. Where are we going to be at week 82? Who knows? Who freaking knows? Okay, have you guys heard of Casa Bonita in Denver, Colorado? 
Well, if you haven't, it's this like huge. Okay, where do I even begin with this? Casa Bonita was this famous restaurant all throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s in a Denver suburb, right? This place is a giant pink building that kind of looks like a church, 52,000 square feet. What? does that look like? I don't know. I told you to cue up that question to me so I could answer and I never researched it. Should I look it up? It's okay. I think our campers can use their imagination. How big is the White House? I don't think 52,000. Maybe it is actually. That's probably, the White House is probably really big if you think about it. Yeah, I've been there once. It is really big. Were you inside or were you outside? No, I was freaking outside. So you weren't there. You were on the sidewalk. No, I was there. Oh wait, I've been to Cinderella's Castle but I haven't been in Cinderella's Castle. I've been You've been, house. So you're proving my point further. I'm not doing this right now. So okay? this restaurant is essentially, allegedly the size of the White House. Wait, and people have described it, wow, full circle here, as the Disneyland <gasps> of Mexican restaurants. So cool. How did we just do that? I think you had the seed planted and it sprouted. We are too good at our job, you guys. So the guys, 52,000 feet and it is like so kitschy, okay? To children, the, di- the dinner entertainment was a child's fever dream. Waterfalls. Cliff divers, black Bart's caves, faux gold, silver mines, puppet shows, and a person in a gorilla costume chased by a sheriff who sometimes <laughs> joins in the cliff diving. Okay. Casa Bonita's curious childhood grip was chronicled in an episode of South Park. And and that was like when it was like shutting down or it was already closed. So this rest because the so this restaurant was like this kind of like cultural phenomenon in Denver, Colorado, like suburbs. Like people would go, but it was always really known to have like terrible food. Oh, uh, like a Rainforest Cafe. But like worse, because I actually thought I remember I like love Rainforest Cafe chicken fingers and mashed yeah. potatoes. Mm-hmm. They have great food. Okay, but like it was really, really bad. People would refer to it as Casa Noida. Okay. Casa That's Bonita. mean. Like you'd like line up and it was like buffet style, but it was almost like a cafeteria. And like parents would go because they're like, my kids love it. It's like a, it is very rainforest cafe, but even better and cooler because they have like shows. So probably like mostly frozen food. Yeah, like it was notoriously known to be like disgusting. Okay, was when do we know when she closed? She closed down for business. Is she closed officially before COVID? Okay, like way before COVID or like um, right before COVID. I don't see how that's any of your business. Okay, moving forward. So it was like I said on an episode of South Park, and there was all this like commotion on south um, like south park fans being like oh my god is this place real is this place real so it was real and the the two creators of south park like had gone as children that's why they talked about it so they did some research and they saw that it closed so they were like wait should we buy it and fix it up and that's exactly what they did so the past couple of years they've been refurbishing the entire like restaurant back to its original glory because they were just so obsessed with it as children. And now it's about to open like any week now. I want to go to the grand opening. I'm so excited, you guys. So they initially thought that it was going to be like a $10 million job, but it ended up being north of $40 million to re- like fix this restaurant and i know you're probably thinking like why would it cost that much money so like they had even said in an interview that it would have cost like a half of the half of that to tear the entire building down and recreate it double the size but they like love the place so much and wanted to protect its original like self that they're restoring every component of it so like if you were to walk in there again after not being there for 40 years it's gonna look exactly the same but better because they're going to like that. have it all like refreshed. Yeah. Isn't that like so exciting? I love that. That's fun because I feel like so many people are like knocking places down and putting up ugly new places that are like trying to be the same, but not quite. So that's honestly respectable from somebody who's super nostalgic. I know. And that's why I love it so much. Clearly so, they are the same. So they did like a, they did like a preview like last month for like 400 people in the New York times went, and that's how I got this article. But they interviewed this like one guy, his name was Mr. Johnson and he had gone there as a kid and he was bringing back his child for the first time. And he was like, I don't know if I've ever seen like my kid like so excited. And Isaac had joined a dozen other children watching a puppet show during which a friendly taco puppet introduced a somber burrito puppet that sang an Italian song. The puppet stage was tucked next to Black Bart's cave, a windy maze minded by two skeletons. Steps away, the Mercado sold Casa Bonita t-shirts, mugs, and other trinkets. And every 20 minutes, divers splash from faux cliffs into a blue pool. Cool. This is heaven on earth, Isaac said. 
This is so you. This so is so cool. Us. Like we love shit like this. They have like this like multiple story like fake cliff like like diving thing like and the actors will get up there and they'll jump off the top of the cliff into a pool in the middle of a restaurant. Do we know how deep the pool is? It's got to be deep enough. It reminds me a lot of that cruise show we saw. <gasps> Aquaphonics. Oh, uh, yeah, the uh, at the Aqua Theater on the Royal Caribbean. Yeah. So, and also, and I have so much to say. I'm sorry you guys. So, about the food right i was gonna ask i didn't want to be rude but the what about the food the food is notoriously known to be like absolutely disgusting so they kept it true no they were like that's the one thing we have to fix if we're gonna have like thousands of people coming to this every single day we need to have good food so the creators of south park they're, they're this is their first time running a, like a restaurant here but they hired dana rodriguez a six-time james beard award nominee and james beard awards are like huge in like the restaurant community yeah i've been trying to get one so she was she's an immigrant from Mexico she grew up in Chihuahua Mexico hmm. this was the first place she applied to as an immigrant like when she back moved when to, it was over yeah when she moved to America Cute. and they denied her <laughs> oh. and when she saw that the job got posted she was like bitch I'm coming back and I'm gonna be the executive chef at the place that didn't hire me for my first job and she is incredible and she's like a staff of 180 people and they're super stoked it's I, just so incredible I wonder if they didn't hire her because she was too good and too qualified to cook no I think maybe back then like she maybe she didn't have enough experience or she was like young like it was the 80s you know what that's I mean true, but we're going were doing... on like f- almost 40 years later so there's probably like a multitude of reasons here but she's back and she's so excited and like she's just like pumped about this they make like 180 gallons of like mole sauce a night 180 gallons yeah isn't that crazy that is crazy so when they interviewed Mr. Parker and Mr. Stone who are like the creators of South Park Mr. Parker was like it's such a visceral place that's why I hope it makes it so cool and then Mr. Stone said that's worth infinity dollars. They're just like really excited to bring back this place to its original glory. And they're like down to do it at whatever cost. But I was thinking, right. I was like, okay, if they have enough money to like contribute $40 million to a restaurant remodel, how much are the like creators of South Park worth? And I know when you like search, how much is a celebrity worth? It's like not accurate, but like, what else are we going to do? Like, it's the only thing I have. So if it's right. wrong, it's wrong. Then it, yeah, um, who cares? We're not fact checking here. But and I don't know if you know the answer to this. But in my head, it's like the longest running animated show is The Simpsons, f- very quickly followed by South Park. Is it not? Because South Park's on their like 80th season. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to also consider like not just the show, but like the merch and the and the blankets and, and the, the movies and the movie. that they have. Yeah, so like it's definitely like definitely worth a lot of money. So I did look it up, and um, they're both worth around the same amount of money. I don't know how one's worth more than the other, but like, do you have a ballpark of what you think they'd be worth? Oh, shit. their names are Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Also, they created. Book of Mormon on Broadway. Book of Mormon. Yeah. Okay. Just, so they so off. that, but that adds to God only knows what else they created. Yeah. And you know, Book of Mormon's currently on Broadway in the West, the West End in London. So it's like that now it's got like its own franchise. Oh, Jesus. They're worth a lot of money. Any guess? Did they have Mormonism in London? Uh, well, no, I think it's just more of the storyline. You know what I mean? Okay. They, they know what it is. Okay. But you're regardless. Um, oh my God. Each person? Yeah. I would say like uh, 20 million. Um, well, babe, that they would ha- each have to contribute twenty million to the restaurant. What are they? What What's are that they? their life savings? Come on. <laughs> so Trey Parker is worth six hundred million, and Matt Stone is worth seven hundred million. I was close. I would assume they're probably worth around the same because they do the same shit. But like, yeah. who knows? But yeah, so that means they definitely had enough money to throw at the Casa Bonita in the Denver suburbs. A fraction. Yeah. I need to go to this restaurant. We have to go. We have to go. We have to go. We have to go. Dead ass. Like, dead ass. We should make like a long Wait, weekend trip. Live ass or dead ass. A dead ass. So if you're watching on YouTube, you already saw the photos that John's going to put up. But if you did not watch on YouTube and you're seeing your car and you have a minute say, just Google Casa Bonita. Or go to our Instagram. Or go to our Instagram because the photos are so, so cool. And it's so us. I know. I can't wait to go. We're going to go. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little. We tell something to fucking take a God damn hike. Get out of here. So what am I telling to take a hike today? Uh, microbreweries. I don't think we need another microbrewery. I couldn't agree more. We don't need another Long Island scantily clad lad pilsner. 
We don't need another place for you to bring your dogs and sit on a wooden picnic table and then have your kid playing like, I don't know, cornhole amongst drunk adults. There's always cornhole. There's always cornhole. There's always a line for the bathroom. There's always overpriced barbecue. They suck. And it's not just that, but it's like the IPA like brews themselves. We don't need another IPA. No, we don't need to even celebrate IPA culture anymore. IPA. I'm pissed off. Off. I've had enough of them too. And they're everywhere now. They are everywhere. And everybody just needs to calm down, please. Like we don't... I feel like it has slowed down. It hasn't. I disagree. They're <laughs> everywhere. And it's like, oh, we're a microbrewery. Well, then try harder. Yeah, Get you're bigger. A, you're a micro penis array. The only reason why you're a micro is because there's a thousand of you every four minutes. Yeah. We need more We need more vodka huts. <laughs> vodka huts. God, I would. I, hey. I would kill to go to a vodka hut. I'm a little slut for a vodka hut. Uh, or, or, a, or a gin blossom. And it's a little garden. <laughs> and I'll follow you down. Yeah, come on. Like, just give everyone else a chance. Please. We, there's so many other avenues of alcohol. The 90s had <laughs> wine. Right. And the vineyards and the wineries. Let's bring back wine coolers. No, no. No, yes. <laughs> We're over seltzers. White Claw, I'm sipping one right now. I don't I know am, if you can tell. I'm but- over. I'm actually into canned beverages now, though. I'm over seltzers, but I'm into beverages in a can. Like what? What are, Can you list one? Um, faux pas by Betches. Oh, hey. Faux pas by Betches. I'll take it. Those are good. So as much as I've been complaining, um, if I was participating, I did come up with a couple of names. You always do this. And you know what? I'm going to do it. One thing about me, I'm going to do it. And I would love for you. To, <laughs> I want you to chime in with your rating on like a one to, to either a one to five or a one to ten. I like ten. And I want an honest rating of the name or of the concoction of the name okay okay so our first one we've we've got four so our first one the trout stout fish oil beer zero and fish oil should not be in beer my nana used to take fish oil pills and i'd be like nana how do you swallow that and she'd be like get the fuck out of the kitchen i'm like die (laughs) (laughs) i used to take fish oil pills in high school they now have anti-burp ones you told me i didn't know about this Mm -hmm. and i dead ass thought it was like an only me thing i used to have to go and ask jeeves.com or yahoo answers and i'm like why am i burping at like second period or third period in high school and i'm like why do my burps taste like fish and it's because of the fish oil they now have anti-burp ones though thank god so you're giving that a zero okay that's fine so what about a lincoln lager which is aged in a barrel that's made out of vintage lincoln logs five hundred thousand. thank that's you that's so smart and so fun and so nostalgic i love that one thank you, you so really much. put your bussy in it i one. did the Zachariah Porter. Oh, well, 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 well. Yeah. You're blushing. L- I am. Listen, I, I'm, what's it called? I might be partial. You may be a partial. Well, I, yeah. See, I may be, oh, I may be biased. Here, yeah. But it sounds like something that people want. It, hey. Listen, there's a girl outside of her windows right now. She's flashing us and she's like, give me the Zachariah Porter. <laughs> and I'm like, girl, get out of the studio. Please God, get out of that campus. These hyper fans are crazy. No, I love that. Okay, so my my last one, thank you so much. My last one is the I'm a Little Teapot Short and Stout. Oh, well, uh, that's cute. Have you actually had a stout? I have had a stout. They're gross. They're not great. I like an IPA. I like a Pilsner. I like a lager. Do you know what IPA stands for? Yes, Indian Pale Ale. Do you know why? Um, I did. I, I definitely took a class on that. Well, this is a little piece of information that could be incorrect, but it resonated with me, so I'm going to regurgitate it. And if it's wrong, that's Don't not on, that's not on me. Yeah. But it's because of how long it took like ships to sail. They had to make beer with like barley and hops and all that shit to stay good. It had to be potent enough for them to be able to travel via ship around India. So IPAs are that old. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they've been around for a minute. Okay, whatever happened. Sorry, another alcohol idea. Whatever happened. Let's bring back mead. 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 Mini mead. Yeah, we want some mini meads. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so that's my... (laughs) Sorry. That was my take a hike and also my business proposition for any of you guys listening out there who's looking for a business partner who's really quick-witted and has a um, bachelor's degree. That's me. So what have you got for us? What are you telling to take a hike? What's pissing you off, bitch? Um, you're gonna be upset. I'm gonna put my iPad down. 
Sometimes I feel that you don't appreciate my midnight performances. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the boom boom. I'm talking about I am I have a, I have a disease. It's it's uncurable. Where is this going? I have the midnight zoomies. Okay. And I like to put on little performances before we go to sleep. Sometimes it's a hula. Sometimes it's a hair toss. Other times it's it's a monologue. I'm just giving theater, live performance, show-stopping, James Beard award-winning performances. And I don't feel like you care nor appreciate the time, effort, and joy I bring to the bedroom. No, I do, and Are I you don't... leaving space for a rebuttal, or is this... No, because okay. I could already tell you... I could already tell you're not listening. You're on the defense. And I just want to open up a space where I feel seen, heard, and appreciated. <laughs> and what better place than a public forum where... Because <laughs> there's other listeners out there who I know are like me that we get a little creepy at night. And, and that's fine. That's fine. But what's the but? No, 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 no. Yeah. So most of the nights I am giggling and applauding with you. But what the thing that is notable to you is when it puts a dent in your ego, which is the one night <laughs> out of out of a three month cycle. What? The one night that I don't giggle at a joke. And then you're it like. It was funny and you were being a brat. No, I was tired because I got up at four o'clock in the morning and I told you that. And I said, I want to go to sleep. And you said, okay, we were horizontal. I was out, doing TV Barracuda out. by a heart. That day, no, you're mixing up your days because that day I was clapping because that was funny to me. And I was literally, <laughs> you were doing a performance, you were out of breath and I was applauding you. And I said, yes, give him his applause. And I thought that was funny and that was great. It was the next night when I told you that <laughs> I was tired and I was so sleepy and my eyes were closing and you, you told me, you were like, stop faking sleeping while I'm mid sleep. Jonathan, wait, 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 wait. Jonathan, no, no, I'm going to say something. Go ahead. I'm going to say something. Okay. I'll give you your you, space. I will. And I'll take it. Thank you. Like a little deli slip. Order number 45. You do this thing where you turn over and you close your eyes and within 20 seconds, I see something in you and this is you. It is. It goes up my ass sideways like a fucking rusty knife. You go, what? I'm sleeping. Turn off this performance, okay? There's no way anyone can fall asleep that quickly. It's a lie. It's a show. It's a sham. I'm pulling back the curtain, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> You're a phony. Here's the thing. The thing about me, I didn't want to go here, but here we're going, bitch. <laughs> so the thing about me, I don't like, I have intrusive thoughts. I have many a thoughts that I don't like to hear. So I'm constantly playing a podcast or music and I'm constantly what? scrolling on my phone horizontal until I'm ready to go to sleep. And I know that it's not good for me, but it's what I do. Because if I put my phone down before I'm ready to go to sleep, and I sit in my silence, my negative thoughts mm -mm. get the best of me. I gave you your time. You're going to give me mine. I gave you your time. You're going to give me mine. I'm number 46. Thank you so much. I'm at the deli counter. So I will scroll on my phone until my eyes feel like they're about to fall asleep. And I will scroll for five additional minutes. And then when I put my phone down and it's on the charger, I'm out. I'm donezo. I'm calling it quits. I have clocks the fuck out. And I can be asleep within 30 seconds because I'm already super tired. And you, one time you came in and you started talking to me and I didn't realize you were talking to me because I was asleep. And you looked at me, you were like, why are you pretending to be asleep? And I was like, I don't know what benefit I'm getting from pretending to be asleep. If I were to say the right word, you'd be snapped right back awake. What's the right word? I don't know. I don't know what it is. The I Grimace can't... birthday shake? Yeah. If I was like, I'm in the room with Grimace birthday shake, you'd be like, oh, excuse me, what? But if it's me saying, watch me do watch me do this thing with my feet, you're like, I'm so tired. I can't. Babe, because it's the 25th time I'm watching you do something with your feet in the fucking day. And sometimes I, I got to call it once quits. Once in a lifetime, I'm a shooting star and you are going to miss it because you fell asleep on me early. And listen. Uh, this is my this is my time. This was my place to air my grievances. If you are a little performer in your life and the, and people don't appreciate it, we're gonna have a support group at Cabin Fourteen, the community center for outshine performers, performers anonymous. And for those whose hands are bleeding from clapping so much, good riddance. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over.
Welcome back, everybody, to Camper Crush of the Week. We've stopped fighting and we're ready to talk about love. Love, love, love. What's love, love got, got to do? do got, got to do with it? it. Oh, what's yeah. love but a secondhand emotion? One more, ready? L O L O L O L O V E L O L O L O L O V E. This is what I do before bed that he doesn't appreciate. But right anyway, now he's joining in. We're moving on. Anyways, this is the part of the show where we talk about what we're loving, what we're crushing on, what we want to snog, kiss. I was going to say slap on the butt, but you no. know what happens. What? You could pull a Michael Darby. Well, we're not going to go down that avenue. We're not. We're not, guys. Sorry. We're on our Potomac era. <sighs> this is Camper Crush of the Week. What are you crushing on this week? So I had a crush of the week, and then I'm changing it as we speak. Oh, I know why you're changing it, and I agree with why. <laughs> so, you guys, I, I am on many sides of TikTok. You are. It's creepy. And one of the sides that I'm on currently is B-Talk. Fierce. Which I had been on before. Uh, buzz, buzz. And I found myself back again. I used to be on it when that hot, that like hot little ticket was on it. Yeah, wait, what was her name? I don't know. Queen Frostine. Like, she was buzzing. She was yeah. doing her thing. She, I think, I'm not, I'm going to be bold for a minute. Yeah. I think she invented B-Talk. She's like the reason we have, we have like beekeeper talk. Yeah, she was the first bee. To, and honestly, if you don't know what we're talking about, we don't even know what we're talking no, about. No, they but there don't. Was one Everyone creator, knows her. Not everybody. But there was one creator in particular who was like big on bee talk. And I'm talking about like bees, like buzz, buzz, bees, like pollination, honey, honeycombs and all that shit. So I was watching this video and. <laughs> all eyes on you. <laughs> Sorry. Careful. That's going to fall off the nail. Keep going. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm on B talk and they're talk. this guy's talking about like the queen bee and I find the queen bees and honestly, all of bee culture. So interesting. So this is the drama that unfolded. There was this, this beehive, if you will. And there was a queen bee that <laughs> what you said a beehive, if you will, that didn't really make sense. Cause it's just, it is a beehive. It is a beehive. It wasn't like a play on words or something. It was just simply it was a beehive. Literally. Quiet from the peanut gallery. From the bee nut gallery. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Keep okay, going. so there's this beehive, if you will. And the <laughs> que- and the queen bee is there. And queen mm. bee is doing her thing. Beyonce? And the, yes. And the guy doing the voiceover was like, hey, she's laying eggs and they're not in the right like pattern. And it's Jerry not- Seinfeld. What? Was the guy the, doing the voiceover? No, is this the B up. movie? This is not the B movie. I'm Get sorry, over I'm yourself. Sorry, I'll stop, I'll stop. So this guy is like, okay, she's not laying the eggs in the pattern that she should be, and um, and we don't know what's going on. She, I'm gonna give her a week to get acclimated. He comes back in a week and he's like, hey, she's not laying the eggs in the way that she should be, and I can tell that the colony is getting pissed at her. They're all picking. They're all taking notice. All of these little bees because they have created two cocoons. They've taken two of her eggs that were in the the um, the comb, and they've taken them out because they feel like they need two potential new queen bees, and they put them above ground on this like on the honeycomb, but like above the honeycomb, and um, and basically what they want to do is have these two daughters be born and have them duel it out to figure out who's the better queen bee. But what they have to do is keep the queen bee, and I'm not even making any of this up. They have to keep the queen bee distracted for two weeks until these hatch, around two weeks. I don't fucking know. But for until the eggs hatch, they have to keep queen bee over here so she doesn't see that they brought these eggs up. Because if she does, the queen bee is going to be pissed and she's going to stab and sting and kill her unborn daughters because she knows that they are being set up to take the place of her. How are these bees so smart? How is this so dramatic? How is there not a telenovela that's already been made about this? How, how, you know? Yeah, the bee culture is, it is, it is crazy. I think they should hire me okay. to be the distractor. Because okay. I'm begging for an audience. <laughs> yeah, clearly. And I'm not getting it late night. So yeah. I can do the late night shows for Queen Bee. You have to be like, look over here, look over here. I know. They're like, she's like, I'm going to go get some fresh air. They're like, man, I better know. Come look at this. <laughs> look at this. 
I found a marble. It's like they really got to work their ass off. They have to for two weeks until these these things are done. And can you believe that the queen bee? First off, she's not doing great with her job. All yeah, the all the all, worker bees who are doing who are putting their asses out on the line are like, bitch. You promised us a 401k. This is a one-sided story. We don't know what this woman has gone through. What has she has sacrificed? Oh, wait, are there any fans of The Crown out there? Me? No, you don't watch The Crown. I've seen. You've seen it, but I'm looking for like the actual like diehard fans. The I refer- smog episode? Well, that's one of the best episodes ever. But I love when the queen shouts. She's like, it is for your the crown and the duty of the crown. So I feel like that's the vibe I'm getting from the queen. Like, it is a duty. It is a birthright. She didn't ask to be the queen. So for anyone to intercept from God's gift of the birthright of the queenship, they could never be queen. But here's the thing is that they're, uh, this guy is saying, okay, the queen's not doing a good job at her job. So you her kill her? Job. You kill her? They didn't kill her. They're setting up new queens. For she, her to be killed. Well, that's neither here nor there. It is so crazy that this guy told you all this and we take it for fact. I didn't Google a single thing. I'm regurgitating this to the tens of thousands of listeners of the Camp Counselors podcast. But I believe Zachary it. Porter and Jonathan Carson. And I'm just, you know, we're just spitting it out there for facts. And it could not be facts. But I just thought that was interesting. So, all that to say, my crush of the week goes out to Bee Talk. No, I think it's cool. I, I do think that bees are super smart. I also love when ants carry something on their back. I think it's crazy. Oh my God, the ants are marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. You'd like, it's like, look at them with a little piece of rice. And they're like, okay, I'm eating for a year, bitch. Fuck you. I saw this what? sad clip and it said, it said, some people will use you until you're no longer worth it. And it was three be or three. I'm sorry, three ants, and they were helping each other. Like co- they connected to cross a log, and the two ants swung up on the log. And the one ant was reaching his little arms up at his antennas. He was like, "Me next, me next," and the two left him there, and he died on the dying branch. You don't know if he died. You definitely made that part up. I saw it. It was a video or a picture. It was a. It was a. First off, it was a DVD, and I went to the scene selection. And <laughs> he was a death. <laughs> Yes. Death, chapter and I, eight. Yes. Chapter well, that's 12. Really it sad. was chapter nine through twelve because they were th- that. That's how they did it. Okay, I'm gonna give you three options, and you have to rank them from best to worst. One being best, three being worst. B movie, Bugs Life, Ants. Bugs Life is one. Thank you. B movie is two. Thank you. Ants. I don't like the animation style. It's like a little creepy. It was clearly direct competition to Pixar's A Bug's Life. Wait, so Ants came out before A Bug's Life. Shut the fuck up. Yes. Shut the fuck up. Does, there is a, I saw this TikTok. Once again, I don't research anything. Yeah, it's too long to tell. But I will say that Sarah Jessica Parker was originally cast in the movie Ants. And she like recorded all of her stuff with the voiceovers. And they're like, you're doing so great. They called her like into the production and be like, you're so good at this. And then a week later, they were like, we're going in a different direction. Oh. And she's like, so I was fired from the Ants movie. That's sad. Yeah, it's okay. She's not losing sleep over it, I promise Yeah, I think she's, she's doing quite all right. Yeah, the SJP shoe collection is absolutely gorgeous. I'm a size 11 in women's heels. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wonder what size I am in a women. What is your men's shoe? You I like can a- tell you my croc size is an 11 and that's too small for me. So I'm in a, like a shoe. 12. In a shoe, I'm 12, depending maybe a 13 in a dress shoe. You've never seen you in a 13, but reach A dress the stars. shoe? My dress shoe that looks like a canoe on my foot is a 13, babe. I think it looks like a canoe because you're going up a size. What's your crest of the week? I just, how are you 11 in a croc at a 13 in a dress show? You're asking me questions as if I'm lying. You can check the closet behind you and I can do a little try on haul for you. Fine. What about the shoes? <laughs> I'm going to, next episode, you guys join us on episode 42 where I'm going to call out Zachariah. Get ready, bitches, because I... it's going to be the last episode of Camp Counts. I keep it real. Oh, yeah. Real hostile. I love you. Love you. What's your crush of the week? My crush of the week is Botox. (laughs) Come on, girls. Wow, we are really... Where is this episode going? Listen, I'm keeping it tight and right, baby. Don't worry about my punani. Um, Actually, no, I got it in my face. So I just really love it. I actually don't. 
I love it and I hate it. Okay, let's talk through this. Okay. What inspired? It? I'll let you take it. I'll, I'll ask questions after. No, it's okay. You can run in whenever. Um, I got Botox because I have like an insane cranium. It's not normal. I'm getting prehistoric. I'll give you a little side profile. They can't see it. Well, people on YouTube can. No, they can't. Why? Oh, the hair. Yeah. Sorry. I got a new hairstyle, you guys. Um, so yeah, no, I just have a really, I had a really deep. A frown line on my forehead and I was getting self-conscious about it and I've always wanted Botox I'm a really firm believer in breast augmentation and facial changes I love it I think like hey if you want it get it if you can afford it then do it and I can afford it so I did it yeah. and I like the results it's been about two weeks now I also got some under eye filler this is my qualm with Botox come on Kwame it has eliminated all of my expression and like that's kind of the point so I don't know why I was shocked by that. So when I lift my eyebrows, I'll do it now. This is also quite possibly, if you're watching on YouTube, this might be the worst episode to demonstrate that. Well, either way, I'm going to talk about it though, because a lot of people listen anyways okay. like, through through the yeah, go ahead. through the audio waves. Like I lift my eyebrows, and the middle part of where I lift of my eyebrows is like non-existent, and it only really raises towards the edges of my eyebrows, like the corners. Can you do that? No, I've never been able to do that. That was a real skill. You just did the worm with your eyebrows. You're so talented. Um, so I can only raise the, the sides of my eyebrows. And it looks like Tim Allen from Christmas with the Cranks, which was my ultimate fear. And I just think I'm such an expressive person that now that I don't have that part of me, I'm just trying to adjust. Yeah. So I like like the way it looks smoother, but I hate the lack of mobility. It's kind of a catch-22. Is that what it is? Why? It's a catch-22 for you. sure. Thank you. I always forgot that. I always mess up that line. I just don't know how I feel. Like, I like feeling the smoothness, but I don't like the lack of mobility. What should I do, doctor? Well, you know you can... It, it'll probably... It's going to dissipate a little bit. Oh, it's going to for sure. Have you gone online to look up what other people are doing to exercise some of it? Because I fear that if you tell them and you go in to dissolve it, they're going to dissolve more than you no, want. No, I'm gonna, not... I was never going to dissolve it. So I I'm think... I'm going to work with it. Maybe go on TikTok, I'm sure, has places, if not Reddit, because that's been online for longer. And I would see, like, what's up? Because this has... To, you're not the only person. Think about how many people get well, Botox. I don't think she do did. That. I don't think anything... There's nothing medically wrong. My no. issue is... You just want a little bit more thing, But it's only been a week. It's been two now. It's been two weeks. I know. And I think it's like, well, Zach, you did want the line. The only way to get rid of the line is to, like, freeze that area, right? So it's kind of like... I got, I fished my wish. Yeah. And sometimes you guys, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. That's yes. What we, I don't we, look like, an, I don't look like a day over 18. Uh huh. I'm a child at this point. Oh, well, don't say that. That's uh, really well, I'm sorry. I am, I am barely legal. Youthful. Okay. okay. Either way. Wow. I, I look, I look like fresh catch. Okay. How's that one? Yeah. In a, in a crab trap. Well, but the problem is, is, I'm, it just, is. I'm just nervous. I'm nervous that people are going to notice and I don't, I miss, I miss the old me. Well, I think you look how fantastic. How is this a question of the week? And I think, I know you just got sad. <laughs> no, because I no, think. No, you like how it looks. Though. I think Botox in general is a fantastic resource. But for me being the professional clown that I am, I kind of need my eyebrows more than I thought I did. And I think looking back on it now, there was really nothing wrong with the way I was initially. And this will go away. But that being said. This is like the episode of Goosebumps. The Mask. I Haunted remember. Mask. With I Carly remember. Bath. I don't remember. Carly Bath. I don't remember. Do you want to tell us about it? Or do you no, that, there? This, you're explaining it. So, but I will say, you guys, I'm not joking. We were at a bar today. And I went into the bathroom and I caught my face in the mirror and I said, okay, bitch. Yeah. It's giving. I love the under eye filler. I'm obsessed with that. Babe, you're serving con. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm a crushing on Botox. I'm just, I, I did get a little nervous about my lack of mobility. And someone commented, my eyebrows were doing a weird thing. And I was like, I'm going to cry. God, okay. I'm going to cry. No. Uh, don't also, cry. people love to <clears throat> tell you the way you did something was wrong and the way they did it was right. You mean? Oh, of course. Since oh, with the beginning everything. of time. everything. And it's just like, why can't we not just announce things to the public I and know. not? People like, and I wanted to talk about it because I was like, I people are going to want to know. And yeah. I was trying to be like, 
like educational, like if in like informative, but people like would DM me and be like, you should have done this, you should have paid this, it was this, you didn't do this right. And I'm like, I went to a literal like board certified professional on the Upper West Side who owns a practice for 30 years, whose celebrities go to. She's a bad bitch. If you think I overpaid, I didn't go to a strip mall, so it might be different than where you went. But like, let it be known. <laughs> like, I'm okay with what I paid because yeah. I can afford it. I, but like, I would never go on anyone's Instagram or DM anyone personally and tell them what they're doing with their life is wrong. Like, sometimes it's okay, everybody. To just n- shut the fuck just up. Stay in your lane. To not say anything. And they're not my campers. No, they're no, not. they're not campers because campers will look at you and be like, yeah, she's serving cunt, so you went to heat. And I will, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. The, as as the response has just been overwhelmingly positive. I'm not joking. Right. But I just, it's those couple comments. And That's sick with it's you. my own insecurities now of like, wait, did I, did I do something I shouldn't have done? I don't think And you it did. will go away, you guys, right? Like everyone's yeah. like, wait, wait, four months. You're going to be like, what the hell did I pay for? It's already gone. But I'm like, okay. I think at the two week mark, what you're feeling is so valid. And this is like, you're looking at yourself in the mirror when things are settling and it's like, okay, it's not a hundred percent what I thought that it was going to be. And it's also like a different feeling that I've ever felt in the past 27, 28 years of my life. You're right. Like it's just, it's so it's uncharted territory and I'm Lewis and Clark, which is really hard to be. Exactly. You know I mean? They were gay. I, I don't have my Sacagawea here. Yeah. I don't have my guide and I'm going in blind people. And you are, and that's okay. And I think you look great and you Thank feel you. great about yourself. I do. And people are always going to have something to say. And you and I, like we've set up before that so many times when somebody says something negative, it's kind of just that they want to say something. They want to make noise and they have nothing better to say. And it's, it's not the campers because the campers are supportive and everybody here loves you, but it's just people sometimes don't have anything else better to say. And that's a little more reflective of them. And it's, Hey, that's that's the show unless they paying your bills pay them bitches no mind yeah and that's just the that's just the way the life is and i think like if this was a if i like didn't do video work as like my job it would Mm -hmm. be different because i think like an arresting photo it looks fierce and like in normal day everyday life i think i don't think you notice but i think i'm like literally professionally recording myself every goddamn day of the week like an inch away from my face and I'm noticing like I just notice a difference and maybe people aren't but like I notice it and I'm here to be vulnerable I'm here to be honest with everybody and hey the odds are out of the people who listen to this people have gotten Botox too and we love we love it that's our crush of the week and anybody who has anything to say about not just you but like anybody who gets anything done I just don't understand that you know yeah, keep or it like, a little bit to yourself because someone will be like oh she's gotten too much work done it's like okay well you also fucked your neighbor and cheated on your husband but nobody's talking about that why don't you mod podge your fucking marriage back together Lucille yeah. and listen I'm I, I love to shit talk more than anybody I feel sure you know what I mean? but we're not talking about like looks no but I, well sometimes sometimes we get carried away everyone's gonna say have every, let's be honest here everyone's Baby, I'm trying have, to keep this boat afloat everyone's gonna have an opinion about somebody it's just like just have a little bit more decorum and keep it to yourself or within your friend group you don't have to comment it online yeah that's what I'm saying and right we'll, perfect that's beautifully said and Poetic. we'll end it there that's the way it crumbles or the freezes cookie wise what song's been stuck in your head all week welcome to camp songs i can't do the rest of it that's okay was that pretty good it was really good that was giving ariel from the little mermaid we didn't talk about that you guys did we talk about that no we did see it i thought it was incredible i know this is song of the week we're moving on to song of the week but i just want to say i know there's been a lot of opinions about the recast of ariel as Haley um Bieber? No, Haley Bailey, right? Hallie. Hallie. I'm sorry. Hallie. Hallie Bailey. Um, she was fantastic. She was so good. Absolutely a My triumph. God. And every part of that movie was incredible. The was one so part fun. I did not like was Prince Eric's song. It did not need to happen. I can promise you that a straight white man does not need a a song in the sun he doesn't need it and we're gonna we're all set with that but the rest of the movie was so good i loved it i loved it i loved it there was a little bit of flounder erasure but we're not going to get into it because they were working with what they had and it put a smile on my face and i laughed and i cried and it was so good i enjoyed it i will say i I wanted a little bit more flounder because i was a big flounder head when i was i wanted a little more veruca salt what was her name veronica victoria 
when Ursula turned into the girl. You're thinking of Vanessa. Vanessa. Shit. I didn't Fuck. Think we got a lot of Vanessa. No, we I don't think we did. too much Vanessa. I think we got two minutes of Vanessa, and she deserved a little more screen time. The actress did. Well, not the character. Oh, guys, we're splitting hairs here. Guys, it's song of the week. This is where we're going to talk about the songs that have been stuck in our head all week. What's your um, song of the week, Jonathan? Okay, my song of the week. God, I'm so nervous. What is it? I wrote it down. Oh, As I Lay Me Down to Sleep by Sophie B. Hawkins. What is this? If you had a stereo, if you had a minivan <laughs> in the a 90s, minivan. or your mom drove one, or you sat anywhere near a speaker that picked up the AM, FM, radio raves, you will remember this iconic number. Can I sing you a little ditty? I wish you would. <clears throat> And it sounds like church bells or the whistle of a train on a summer evening. I want to meet you barefoot, barely breathing as I lay me down to sleep. This I pray that you will hold me dear. You know the song? Though I'm far away and I will whisper up your name into the sun. No? I, I'm, I shit you not. It's not, it's not ringing any of my bells. You've never heard that song before by Sophie B. Hawkins. No, I don't think I know that one, babe. Oh, what year did it come shit. out? It came out in the 90s. It you know really year. reminds me of one of my favorite movies that we need to watch tonight called Now and Then with Christina Ricci. You love, you talk, we should watch that today because the you amount talk of about it so much. The amount of times I've talked about it and the amount of times that I just really want to freaking watch it. We, and it's, it is crazy that we haven't watched just it Just put it on. Okay, we're going to put it on. But that song, I love it. I can't believe you've never heard that. And if maybe there, maybe there's some cross with clubs. So mesmerized by. Idea. I would. I liked watching it. I was. Enjoy, I like enjoyed what I was hearing. Thank you. Well, it's in there, and it's it's definitely one of the songs. Someone out there knows. Oh, I'm, I sure, just, I'm sure a lot of them know it. It's around the time of Sunny came home, and I love that category of women in the 90s who were unafraid to grow their hair out put on a pair of low-rise baggy jeans and, and, and probably us, not shave their armpits and let us have it thank you the girls were girling in the 90s girly you know who my favorite 90s girl is i want to say it's it's a toss-up between paula cole okay and Cheryl crow i also Cheryl fuck crow. with Nora jones Nora jones is great i'm surprised one of my favorite all-time songs is a Paula Cole song, and I only know three Paula Cole songs. And my favorite song from her is Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? I like that one. That, where I don't know where the way you turned out to me. Where is my Tommy Lee? Where is my Berry song? Anyway. Wherever the cowboys go. Okay, that's enough of that. So that's my song, is Sophie B. Hawkins, As I Lay Me Down to Sleep. What is your cap song you'd like to share with all of us? Ugh. Guys, guess who made an extended cut of their original album? Noah Khan, everybody. Uh, Stick Season. I love that album so much. He just released like an extended cut of it. I think we got like eight new songs. I'm not really sure. A bunch. And like that new version's called We'll Be Here Forever. And guys, it is just, oh my God. I listened to the entire album from start to finish with the new songs included. And I cried like four times. Yeah, I came down. It was early, early morning. It was a weekday too. It was like a Tuesday. I'm not joking. When I drove back from Mass to New York the other day, like when you were in Philly still, when I when came back like a couple weekends ago, yeah. I listened to his album like front to back like two times. And I was just like, oh my God, not a skip in this whole junket. It's yeah. so good. So a couple notable mentions off of the new release. We're only going to put one on the playlist because I don't want to inundate you, okay? Yeah. So if I'm going to pick one, I'm going to pick Drunk Dial. It's probably the biggest one off of this new kind of extension. That's the one that they put on the um, New Music Friday. Yeah, it's kind of like... The I, song. I, I don't know if you can call it a single because it's like an extended of an album. You know what I mean? But it's like of the... Okay, so Jonathan doesn't want us to call it a single. Of the new release, it's kind of like the single. So we're going to put that on there because it just it's so great. But I also love You're Going to Go Far. My um, best friend Amanda texted that to me and she goes, this reminds me of you. And I woke up at 10 a.m. and listened to it for the first time. And I sobbed. I sobbed on my couch. It was such a sad song for me to listen to. Very emotional and amazing. If you like to listen to sad 
depressing music. And if you're from New England, bonus points. This is the artist and album for you. It is gut-wrenching and beautiful. And you know me. I love that. Another um, notable mention for me is The View Between Villages Extended Cut. Amazing. Also, Paul Revere. I could literally put every single song on this extended version on this list, but I love Noah Khan. And I either want to go to see him at Radio City on August 31st or in Mansfield, Massachusetts, September 7th. I want to see him in Massachusetts because I feel like New England, New England, New England. Corp, yeah, corp. I think we should do that. I know. I need to ask him. We're not going to, we don't want to see him at Radio City Hall. I will if I have to. I know, but I feel like his I also music's like, not giving rock hats. Like, I don't want to, I feel like it's going to set the tone for you and Amanda would love to go. I haven't asked her yet. Okay. Amanda, this is your formal um, invitation. Invitation, because I know Amanda, she's Amanda, I will literally buy your ticket. Just come with me. Um, I'll talk to you later. Love you. But that was my song of the week. And I listened to some of the songs with you and he is so good and so talented. And I, to counteract it, I enjoy sound music, but it's like, it reminds me so much of this guy, I forget what his name is, but like, Niall Horan's Flickr album, I can't do because I that was literally that came out right when I was going through a breakup. And I just there's certain types of music that I don't know why I get so weirdly emotional. The song can be so incredible, but I can really I only have the men, like the emotional capacity to listen to it like once because it it like it hits too close to home. Is that weird? I no, it's not. And I think that's the, that's a, that's the test of good music is to like be a cathartic experience. And I think when I find music that like makes me feel any sort of emotion on a high spectrum, like he makes me really depressed and sad. And I know it's not like music for every day, but the way that he can do that, I think is incredible. And I, I love to cry. I really do. I find it to be such an powerful like feeling. And I think the way that he can bring that out in me is just Oh my god, I'm obsessed. I, like I'm obsessed with him. It, and he's a, and I'm glad that he's like blowing up. He's like getting his. his he's getting his flowers right sure. now. He is. So I found the song that reminded me of of what you're talking about. It's by Keaton Henson, who's like not big online or anything. And the song is called "You." And I don't off the album "Birthdays." And I don't know how I came across it. I'm gonna play it for you after. But I listened to the song once fully all the way through and I still haven't listened to it since. And this was in 2018, maybe 2019. And I was at work and I had to stop working and go to the parking lot and cry in my car it's just like one of those songs and that's the type of vibes that noah khan gives to me and that's you know i grew up in new england and i identify with the core messaging of his music and i don't live there anymore and this is like a little slice of sad home for me and i'll never get rid of it like i will i will listen to this man like that album i know when i'm like 90 years old like yeah. I, that's like a forever kind of music for me it's like my Lana. It's like my Beyonce. It's my Noah Cyrus. It's like these. This is like these are the, He's like a core person now. I know it forever. I, I'm so excited to see what he does next because I'm like going to be a fan of him. I know it forever. I'm so in. I admire your love for his music. Thank you. Well, that was song of the week, you guys. You can listen to it for free on our YouTube playlist and also our Spotify playlist. And we have been rambling for quite some time. So um, we're done. So I think we're done for the episode. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore, Dad. And yet we're gonna, you know, some moving forward. Some segments are gonna pop in. Some segments are gonna pop out. Um, and that's just gonna be the way that it goes. Yeah. Honestly, but, let me be true for a minute. Let me be honest. Yeah, Guys, but we, it's, be honest. The way that we set this podcast up, if you've been here for the, from the beginning, it is feeling a little overwhelming. We don't want to. We we want to keep doing this, but we need to find a way to restructure so that yeah. Jonathan and I can bring you a show that we can like handle every single week. Yeah. And we we started really complicated. We we've started kept complicated. It very complicated. It's I don't I couldn't even tell you how many segments we have. It's a lot. It's a, it's lot. a lot per so, episode. It's a lot of emails to fish through. We can't even get through all the emails. And we're so grateful. We are. Like, don't let's not get that twisted. Like we are so grateful that you guys listen and that you spend the time to email us in. Like that's the part that like makes me feel bad is like I I I want to tell all of the stories, but it, it becomes like a little overwhelming when we have so many emails and so many segments that we pressure ourselves ourselves to do and at the end of the day we want camp shady birch to be like it's a fun fucking place and i want we want you guys to show up every week and we want to show up every week with like the highest amount of energy yeah just do what we can do and just bring a smile to your face and you know and just you do the damn thing so every week you'll see what shows up and what doesn't but we'll <laughs> be here and we hope you will too yeah and with that being said lights, lights out, out campers, campers.